of what's for dinner. Tonight's menu, just ran to the grocery store. Salisbury steak. Did you know it's not steak? Because I did not. <laughs> I gathered all the ingredients that I need. We're gonna have a side of green beans. Two seconds in, already got interrupted. With Salisbury steak, uh, typically has mushrooms. Oh, and you know what I forgot from the store? In my amazing grocery bag? Oh, just kidding, it wasn't there. An onion. <laughs> I think that's everything we need for the most part. When I cook the green beans, it'll need some garlic and butter. Just simple, I'm not heating up the oven. It's all gonna be on the stove top. And now that I said garlic, I'm pretty sure I need some for the Salisbury steak. You know what, I'm gonna do powdered. Last time I went to the grocery store, I did not get any fresh garlic and that was an error on my part. Okay, so let's start whipping this stuff together. This fancy steak by Sal. Let me get a bowl. Oh, but let me tell you the week of dinners. I have a meal plan, but sometimes plans change. So I'm not gonna lay it all out for you, but I will tell you every single meal is gonna be delicious, easy, family friendly, and quick. Does, is that a synonym for easy? What, you get it, let's do it. I've gotta keep things simple. My kids have after school activities most days. Today is no exception. That freezer Ziploc bag seal is no joke. Recipe calls for a pound of beef, I think. I read different recipes and then just put them together. So a pound to two pounds, that's closer to two. Oh, I guess I could weigh it with my kitchen scale. It's an actual kitchen scale. Remember when I had a uh, literal weight? All right, let's do it. Let's see how much this baby weighs. How much are you, baby? 2.9. Oh wait, did I clear it out? Did I clear it out? I don't think I cleared it out. I still get this. Okay, let's do. Let's try that again. Getting out of hand. No, it's a, It's still 2.8. Uh, 2.9. That was not worth it. Do not recommend. I'll pick that up when I want to get my hands messy. To the meat, we're gonna add some breadcrumbs. I have some gluten-free breadcrumbs mixed in with some panko breadcrumbs. I don't know, do a third to a half a cup. And I'm going to add a little bit of onion powder. I feel like that always bumps up the flavor. Fresh garlic if you have it. I explained I do not, more the merrier. I'm gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce to the mixture and also to this sauce. It just really gives it a nice, rich, deep flavor. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of mustard. You can add dry mustard if that's what you have. One egg. I halfway expected that egg to be boiled because I, I just found it randomly in my fridge. <laughs> I'm all out of eggs and I was happy to find that. Add a little bit of salt and pepper. And then also some beef broth to this because um, we need some liquid, right? And then just give this, ooh, yeah, it feels nice. Give this a nice mix. Okay, that feels good. Now I'm gonna portion this out. Is that a good portion size? I don't really know. How many is this supposed to make? Oh, okay, hold on, hold on now. Let's weigh it out. 9.9 .9 ounces. <laughs> if you think I'm dirtying a plate, you are incorrect. All right, how's that? It didn't even, re okay, there it goes. Wait, it didn't even recognize. Okay, that's 3.3 .3 ounces and I'm pretty sure that's exactly what we're looking for. Okay. I actually have absolutely no idea and I have never weighed my food ever in my entire life. I feel like this is a, a decent size for a child. You know, grab two or three or four for an adult. Depends on how hungry you are. I'm just gonna shape these into little patties. Am I supposed to make this look like steak? You're trying to fake Sal out over here and make him think that he's eating steak and it's just ground beef. The poor man's steak, even though it's still $3 a pound on a sale day. Hey, looks like these are all formed and I'm feeling good about it. Uh, so this is the biggest pan I have to cook them in. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna try to add some oil and be on our way. Oh, all my knives are dirty. All my good ones anyway. Um, I'm going to slice up an onion. And really you could have had this going and cooking while you were shaping the meat. So I just 
you know me. Here's the problem. I watched Anne Burrell, is that her name, on Food Network, and she was doing this recipe, and anyway, that was my inspiration. Then I looked up a few other recipes. All right, I've got Sal's steaks cooking over here, and I'm going to cook the onion, saute it for about five minutes. I will add some salt and pepper to this because we season every layer. I'll tell you what, just cooking these two things, the onions and the, it's like, it's like a hamburger. It smells so incredibly delicious. I could just eat these two things. But alas, I know that's not what Sal would want. I'm going to reserve these over here in a bowl and add a touch more oil to the pan so I can add in my mushrooms. I typically don't buy mushrooms like this. Um, Alex bought them. He's really into mushrooms and zucchini, but I'm taking some for tonight's dinner and I don't think he'll be disappointed. I used to make chicken marsala a lot. That's like the closest thing I can think of to this dish. It's like a gravy-based chicken with mushrooms inside. I don't know. Um, season this, of course. A little bit of salt. The salt will really allow the liquid from the mushrooms to come out and then a little bit of pepper. Coming over here, I am going to split these. I think it's time. It's not time. Okay, maybe we need to make it a little higher. Okay, I'm getting impatient, so I'm just going to flip them. <laughs> I don't really care that much. I feel like they're getting a nice, good enough color on them. This smells so dang good. I'm gonna try my best to not burn myself while I try to get the drippings from this pan and transfer them into this pan. <laughs> Wish me luck. Yee! Don't start a fire. Oh gosh, oh boy, okay, let's go. Oh shoot, starting a fire, starting to breeze, fire. Add a couple pats of butter in here. To that we're going to add just a few tablespoons of flour. I'm using gluten-free flour. That's about three tablespoons. And I have found to thicken sauces, gluten-free flour works just as well. Maybe I add a little bit too much. I thought I had more of the hamburger fat in here. Well, this is very crumbly. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil, see if I can get this down to a paste. The rest of the beef broth, and by rest I mean use a can, about a cup and three quarters. Whisk this in. To the sauce, I'm also going to add more of the Worcestershire sauce, a little bit of red wine vinegar for acidity, and then some more dried mustard just to tie the flavors together. And I read one recipe that had tomato paste, so it's like, why not at this point, you know? I put tomatoes on my burger. That's a lie, I don't. I actually hate tomatoes. Oh, the tomato paste may have been a mistake. Okay, I'm gonna hopefully be able to fit all of these little babies in here. And the toppings. A little more liquid, because it's still going a little crazy. Okay, I'm gonna cover this and let it simmer for 20 minutes. Yeah, I don't know, I feel like the sauce was doing well until the tomato paste, but I haven't tasted it yet, so the jury is still out. I don't know how this is gonna make it 20 minutes. <laughs> it is bubbling. Uh, well, let me tell you something. I just had a little taste test of just the meat. I did taste the sauce just a tiny bit, and it is delicious. Perks of being the chef. I'm going to cook the green beans on the stove top. It's not something I typically do, but it's fine. Water at the bottom, about a half a cup. It's a lot of green beans. And then some salt and pepper. I like a lot of salt. Mix it just a little bit, cover it, and let it steam for, I don't know, about five, 10 minutes, and then we'll add some butter. I was on the phone, but basically the green beans are finished. This is the final plate. Ready to eat, bon appetit! Green beans, I just added a little bit of butter to them. Nothing special, salt and pepper. And the Salisbury steak looks really salsy, if you ask me. Um, delicious. I mean, is this what dreams are made of? By the way, the potatoes oh, are left over. Yeah, potatoes. from the other night. But you can serve it with rice potatoes. or anything else. Okay, we're ready to eat over here. Okay, tonight for dinner, I'm gonna throw together a really quick marinade. It is huli huli chicken. I don't know where the huli huli this recipe came from, but it requires some pineapple juice. And my kids are not eating through this pineapple because, well, it wasn't the 
best when it came out. So I'm gonna use a blender and just make like juice or whatever. You need one cup of pineapple juice, but um, I'm just gonna do however much this will blend up, you know? And as far as this recipe goes, first of all, it's a chicken recipe. Did I say that, hula hula chicken? It's gonna be a lot of hula hula fun. There's just some simple ingredients that you need. And I love marinades because you can kind of um, let the flavors develop. I'm gonna blend this up. Or not. Okay, I felt like there was a learning curve to this. I also feel like I overfilled it, which is whatever. So one cup of pineapple juice. I have more of a pineapple smoothie and that's definitely more than one cup, but I don't care. Oh, just kidding, in the list of ingredients, I forgot soy sauce. You guys know I like to use cocoa aminos, so you need half a cup of soy sauce in here. Half a cup of ketchup. I'm not really a huge fan of ketchup, so I'm gonna go shy on this half cup. Two teaspoons of ginger, and I just have the paste. I'm trying to work through this. One teaspoon of fresh garlic. You can leave this out. I read several recipes, um, but this was the most amazing huli huli chicken, so it added one tablespoon of sriracha. This is probably expired. Nope, not yet, next month, awesome. Two teaspoons of gra, oh no, it didn't have ground mustard. It had Dijon. Some recipes didn't have this, so I feel like if you don't like it, like leave it out, but we did add ketchup, so I feel like the only fair balance is mustard. Couple teaspoons of sesame oil, and then one third cup of brown sugar. This will give it a nice caramelization when it cooks, and a nice sweetness. Mix all of this up. It smells kind of weird, it looks kind of weird. I'm going to add three uh, pounds of chicken. I have thighs. You guys know I love thighs the most. I feel like they're the most flavorful, they're juicy, and you can't really overcook them. So I'm just gonna, oh, and mine is completely frozen if you didn't gather. So I'm gonna let this marinate and thaw out at the same time all day long. And then we'll cook it on the grill, or if you have a George Foreman, or I'm sure you can put this in the oven, it'll be just as tasty. Okay, let's check out this hooly hooly chicken. It's been a long day. We had a bunch of people over the house. We've been outside all day, so I haven't, um, I stirred it like once, which is whatever. So my original plan was to make this on the grill and you know, the day got away from us. It's a little late, so I'm gonna do it on the GFG, the good old George Foreman. In the meantime, I'm going to cook up some corn. I'm gonna boil it. I was gonna also do this on the grill, but I have to cook this corn up before it goes bad. I don't even know if it will fit in this pot. Oh gosh, that's too much water, but somehow not enough. I never knew this, but apparently you only have to boil corn on the cob for five minutes. What? <laughs> I always boil it for like 20. Uh, yeah, so there's, there's a tip of the day for you. I have rice cooking in the instant poot. And I think it's time to get this hula hula chicken on to the grill. Might have to do this in a couple of batches. Oh yeah, listen to that sizzle. All right, let that cook for, who the heck knows? Five, five minutes, I guess, I don't know. I don't know about you, but there's just something about corn and grilling, even though it's not like real grilling. Just reminds me of summertime. Oh, uh, summertime fun. I don't think this is done. It has been five minutes. I'm gonna let it go one more minute just in case. I could do the old temperature gauge. I'm pretty notorious for undercooking chicken. I don't know. That didn't move at all. <laughs> Come on, chicken. Hooli hoo. Well, that looks about done to me. I'm gonna put these onto a platter. Serving platter, nice fancy one. Hey, listen, when you eat at home a lot, you just, you have to make it a little fancy sometimes. Hey, grab out your nice platters. And by nice, I mean I got this one from Home Goods for like 10 bucks. Use it all the time, feels great. By the way, I wash these, okay? Get off my back. And here's my little uh, corn on the cob trick. When you take it out, uh, if you're boiling it, I put a stick of butter in here, you see it? A stick of butter, right there, okay? 
and you put the hot corn in a Ziploc bag with that stick of butter and you'll get some BPE. What's that chemical in plastic? BPE? Yeah, that's it, right? Anyway, you'll get some of that and you'll get a nice way to coat your corn. You know what? I have a lot of corn. I might do two sticks. I'm not even joking. I don't kid around when it comes. No, one stick should be good. I want to spend the rest of my life. Oh my gosh. Zip the bag up if you can stand the heat. If you can't stand the heat, get the heck out of my kitchen. All right, there we go. There we go. Woo. And then just make sure the corn is coated in the butter. Ooh, yeah. It's a nice, easy way instead of like fiddling around with the butter and stuff with a bunch of kids, you know, this is just the easiest way to do it. You can add any seasonings that you want inside of this. I just don't, my, the butter I buy is salted, so it's good enough. There it is, super simple dinner, uh, hooli hooli style, hooli hoo. The corn just looks so nice. What was I saying? Oh, spoiler alert, I cooked the corn for 20 minutes. I don't even care what the Food Network says, it's like, I'm a chef on Food Network, you know what I mean? I say it, it needed 20 minutes. I don't know, man, unless you like really hard, crunchy corn. That's not my vibe. All right, time for dinner. We do have some mashed potatoes over there. Don't look, that's from, I put out food earlier today, but that's not dinner. And then we have the rice going over here. Oh gosh, okay. I was like, is there still 10 minutes left? Impossible. Um, I had a piece. Alex had a piece. He said it was absolutely delicious because I was worried. I was like, I don't, is this chicken good? Is it okay? <laughs> I don't know. I have a really hard time these days deciding if it's just me being nauseous and not liking it or if the chicken is actually bad. So I had him taste test it. He said it was scrum diddly umptious. So a boon appetit. Oh crap. I still need some stuff. I thought I was ready. Just give me a minute. Uh-huh. 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 Okay, <laughs> so short story long, tonight for dinner, I am making, I don't know what it's called, lemon chicken, some version of lemon chicken with like a nice buttery garlic sauce. Um, I was looking through a lot of recipes that have Parmesan and they look dreamy, but we are trying to be dairy free. I have dairy free butter if you're wondering like, we have butter, that's fine. I had other plans for tonight's dinner, but there was a very large frog in front of my freezer in the garage and I said, forget that. Uh, so I have chicken in my inside freezer, so we're going with that. I took out some chicken thighs earlier this morning. I'm gonna throw it in the crock pot. So dinner will be hopefully mostly ready by the time it's actually time to make dinner. I'll make zucchini as a side dish. Um, so let's just throw this together in the good old crock pot. All you need are a few things. I am going to throw the chicken thighs straight into the crock pot. I have arranged them in the crock pot like so because I'm fancy. And I'm just gonna quickly get the rest of the ingredients in here. So a little bit of garlic powder. Actually it calls for powder and cloves. The cloves are in my outside fridge and honestly I'm afraid to go out there right now so I'm just going to add enough garlic powder for it to matter. I also have some salt and pepper in here so I'm just gonna continue to add some seasonings. And actually there's garlic in here too so it's gonna be really garlicky. There's a little bit left. Well, like what am I gonna do with that? A little bit of onion powder in here. A little bit of paprika. I feel like I could have left that out and it would be just as good. And then some Italian seasoning. Can't leave this out. Looks good already. Raw chicken never looks so good. I do not need to roll these because they are on their last leg. I am, however, going to zest the lemons. I think this zesting citrus just gives it so much more flavor to the dish. It calls for the zest of one, but you guys know I like to go big. So I'm going to do two lemons, and these are like honkin' chonkin' GMO style lemons. <laughs> I just don't want anyone to wonder, hmm, what kind of chicken is this? I want them to know. Oh, it's garlic lemon chicken, you know? Allow those flavors to really burst. Okay, super. And then we add the juice.
and try to catch the pits this time. <laughs> and then half a stick of butter, and I just cubed it up. The recipe also calls for a third cup of chicken broth and I don't really know why I'm using more than half a stick. I just feel like we need more, right? <laughs> Mostly because I don't wanna open up two cups of chicken broth and only use the third cup. I could add some water in here, but I feel like all the juices from the chicken are going to come out and that will be enough for like a sauce. If I need to reevaluate, I'll, I can always add some, right? But for now, there's that. I'm gonna cover it once I find the lid. Who the heck knows where any of my kids put it? I don't. I don't know, cover it low and slow or high and dry. Will this one fit? Nope. Okay, I have to take you on a little field trip, field trip, field trip, field trip. Out to the garage because, dude, it's been several hours and this frog is still is he alive? It, oh God, it's definitely a frog. I can't, mm, I gotta get out of here. I can do spiders, but no, thank you. Um, I'm sorry. It's almost dinner time, so I'm just checking on this and holy fajoli. First of all, it smells absolutely insane. It looks incredible. I still have to throw together the side dishes. Uh, hold on one sec, let me make this look Food Network quality. There it is. Actually, I'm not sure if that helped. <laughs> you know, this is why I don't have my own uh, Food Network show. Anyway, I, I can't wait to dive into this. It smells so good. I'm gonna whip up some side dishes and then it'll be time to eat. Super fast, easy, easy. No skill involved at all. Okay, semi-weird news. For some reason, our fridge temperature was set to 35 degrees, so everything froze. Um, once we noticed, I changed everything, but I don't, um, did we change everything? I don't know, man, it's real cold still. Anyway, what I'm getting at is I'm not sure if our zucchini survived. Yeah, see that? That's not good stuff. Yeah, this one is ice. This one is a block of ice. I don't even know who changed the temperature. It must have just been a kid just pressing buttons, you know what I mean? Ah, it's frustrating. You know what, I'm just gonna cut it up and it'll be fine because it must. But I will cut it into pieces like so, like little hunk of chunkies. It's not exactly what I was envisioning, but you know what? Good enough. This is literally like ice. I'm just gonna throw the zucchini in with a little bit of oil and then keep it super simple with salt and pepper. You could add lemon to tie the flavors together, but I don't know if my kids will enjoy that. Once the zucchini gets a little bit of color, starts getting tender, that's when I think it's done. And I'm just gonna plate it onto a nice little platter. Oh my goodness, doesn't that look beautiful? Super hot, super beautiful, um, and for color, a little bit of parsley on the lemon chicken because we are real chefs here, okay? Amazing. Ah, oh, what? I have rice going. It's leftover rice. Oh my, <laughs> I can't wait to eat it. I can't wait. Where are my kids? Dinner time. Come on and eat. You guys know I'm gonna take a little taste test before they come inside. Oh my word. I just tried a bite. This would be great over pasta. If you're making pasta, the cavalry's coming in, it's gonna get loud, but it is great over rice because of all of the juice that we have in the crock pot. It just makes a great sauce for the rest. Oh my God. <laughs> the chicken is tender. It is delicious. It is juicy. All the things that you want. And all of the other recipes that I saw had you like bread the chicken. So I think this is a great alternative to just throw it in the crock pot. And then if you're counting calories or macros or whatever, it's also less to count, right? It's just seasonings. There's no carbs with the flour. It's fantastic. Okay. Also dairy free. Oh, I still love it so much. Okay, tonight for dinner. Oh, I'm really excited about this one. This, first of all, from a meal plan that I am borderline having a problem with in a good way, like obsessed, but I didn't wanna say I'm literally obsessed with this because that's what everyone says. But I think I really have a problem with Elise from Macro Friendly Foods. 
I love her meal plans. Simple recipes, delicious, family friendly, all that good stuff. I'll link her below. She shares a few of her recipes on Instagram. This is one she shared on Instagram, so I feel comfortable sharing the whole thing with you. But, um, so tonight, short story long, we have a slow cooker meal because it's the end of the school year. The kids have a lot of things happening, so, um, you know, it's keeping us busy over here. And I wanna make sure that I have food on the table at the end of the night and I'm not like, what's that word? Not scrounging around, but like, I don't, whatever that word is, like yeah, scattered, whatever, trying to make dinner. It's like seven o'clock and you're thinking, oh my gosh, everyone's hungry, it's bedtime. I uh, wish it was bedtime at seven o'clock. Okay, so <laughs> anyway, tonight where I'm going to make slow cooker, shredded barbecue beef and top it with some Greek yogurt coleslaw. So these recipes are also like slightly healthier, which I quite enjoy. And they're also like summertime fun. I'm ready for summertime. I should have done like a whole summertime themed what's for dinner, but I guess we're just creeping into summertime, so I have plenty of time for that. Okay, I don't know. Let's start out by searing this meat that I spent an arm and a stinking leg on. While the oil heats up, I'm just admiring. Like, look at this. I just can't, I can't get over how delicious and easy her meals are. Look at the vibrant picture on that. Do you think ours are gonna turn out like that? Yes, do you know why? Because Elise doesn't lie. She's the woman across the room. Okay, ooh. This is two and a half pounds of chuck roast going into a golden hot skillet. And we're just gonna sear this on every side, lock in the juices. Okay, once it's good and seared on every side, I just do top and bottom. Some people do like every side. It's just too much work for me. Turn your burner off. Throw it into the crock pot and to that, I'm going to add one tablespoon of brown sugar. What's that gonna do? I'm gonna add a little bit more. A little less healthy over here, but a little more delicious. A sprinkle of paprika, a little bit of garlic powder, Mm. One teaspoon of chili powder. One teaspoon of onion powder. I think it's one teaspoon of everything, but I go big. And then a little bit of salt and pepper. Use the smoky paprika if you have it. It gives it that nice like barbecue smoky flavor. And I'm going to use this sugar-free barbecue sauce in her honor, in Elise's honor, because uh, if this brings me one step closer to being like her, I say do it. <laughs> in reality, you can use any barbecue sauce that you want. You use two cups of that, which is basically an entire 18 ounce bottle of this, and I have the sweet and spicy kind. Was that a mistake? Who knows? I don't think so. I don't know where my lid is, so I'm gonna have to look for that. But once that's done, we're gonna shred it up, and then I also have these buns to put it on from Publix Bakery, literally the best. Let's work on the slaw. Simply the best. Also, these spices, very reasonable, everyday spices. At least in my realm of cooking. How's my hair look? I didn't do it this morning. I got out of the shower, rushed to see one of Wentworth's like classroom recitals. It's fine, it's just hair, no one cares. Okay, moving on to the coleslaw, let me grab a bowl. Very few ingredients in this as well. Half a cup of plain Greek yogurt. If you don't have yogurt, you could use mayonnaise or whatever you'd like. Two tablespoons of sugar, a quarter cup. <laughs> Apple cider vinegar. Come on, muscles. <laughs> I used to be strong. <sighs> Come on, Kim, everybody's watching. It twisted, it turned, doing all the good things. A quarter cup of that. I went a little on the shy side. Oh, apple cider vinegar is not my thing. I am going to add some lime juice to this. This is a Kimberly Whisk exclusive. <laughs> Oh my gosh, these lines are so dang sad. Ooh, I almost forgot I have this. Oh good, I'm gonna squeeze it in here. The juice of the lime should compensate for the lack of quarter cup of uh, apple cider vinegar. And then just simple salt and pepper seasoning for this. Give that a mix. And then I have this 16 ounce coleslaw blend. 
I just picked up from the farmer's market this morning, okay? Throw all of that in there. Oh man, I should've got a bigger bowl. Story of my life. Then give this a nice mix, and this will sit in the fridge all day while the meat is cooking. So it is morning time, and dinner is basically complete. While this sits in the fridge, um, it'll like soften up, up that cabbage a little bit. Did you know coleslaw could be so simple? I have rice. It is several hours later, and I, woo, even though I made the coleslaw, I'm going to make, I like bent down to get in frame. I, it's fine. Anyway, um, I thought, oh, let's make some sweet potato fries. I forgot to pick some up from the store. So I found these beauties in my pantry. So these beauties will be cut up. I'm actually, this like creeps me out. It gives me the creepy crawlies on my skin. I mean, <laughs> like, I don't even know. It's done, it's just roots, but I can't touch it. I need Alex for this. It's the little things in life, you know? Frogs and potato roots, I cannot do. You know what, I can't find Alex. I can do hard things. Look at that! Look at that! Conquering fears and all that good stuff. That wasn't bad at all. All right, I'm gonna give these a, a little rinse. There's just something special about sweet potatoes from my road. I actually have normal french fries in the oven, but clearly these uh, need to be eaten. <laughs> the bottom of this one eh, is pretty rotten. Yeah, not just the bottom, it's the inside too. So I'm gonna try to work around. Ooh, something it smells really nice actually. I think it was the soap I used. <laughs> To wash, yeah, that smells nice. All right, what was that? I'm gonna do my best to save as much as I can, okay? And I'm gonna do something a little bit different with these. I typically throw them straight into, uh, what am I doing? No one knows ever. I usually throw whatever veggie I'm cooking straight onto the sheet pan, and that way, I don't have to dirty a bowl. But, I saw this hack. I don't, well, I don't know if it's a hack. So you know how people just spread lies on the internet. So I'm gonna try it out and I'll let you know if it's a hack. But basically it says to um, throw the veggies or potatoes in my case onto a hot pan and that crisps them up a little more. So I'll let you know if it works. My potatoes always get crispy anyway. I have a confection oven, so it's really nice. Okay, once I have all the sweet potatoes in a bowl, I'm going to coat them generously with at least two to three tablespoons of oil and generously give them a coating of salt and then some pepper and you, oops, and you can use any seasoning that you like. Italian seasoning, sweet potatoes uh, do well. A lot of people put cinnamon on them and then give them a toss. I just like it simple. We have enough flavors going on with the barbecue. I, I don't want to compete. And I have my pan in the oven at 425 degrees. Getting nice and steamy and dreamy. You know what, I just went in my pantry. I feel like this would be fantastic on them. I'm not gonna add it on, but it's a good idea for you, this steak blend. <laughs> it smells like barbecue. It smells so delicious. Moment of truth, hopefully the pan got hot enough. I don't know, let's listen for the sizzle. Oh yeah! Listen to that sizzle sizzle! I don't know, I kind of like jingle jangle more. Listen to that jingle jangle! Back into the oven until they're done. Maybe let them cook for 10 minutes and then give them a stir, you know? Or don't, I don't care. Okay, my Google is screaming at me. I am going to toss these up. Oh yeah, do you see this? The bottom has a nice crisp, so we just wanna give it a chance to get that crisp on every side. Moving over to the Wizard of Oz, to the crock pot. Turn my lights on under here, maybe that. Oh my gosh. It feels like nothing. Oh yeah, oh that's tender. 
So I guess I'm just going to rip this apart, keep it in the sauce. This is where those bear claws would really come in handy. Oh my gosh, but then again, uh, I barely need to touch this and it, it just falls apart. So this is incredible. I am obviously going to take a taste test of this, but I can tell you right away that it smells incredible. All my senses are going off right now. Okay, bottoms up. Yeah, man. Mmm, it's gonna be real good. Yeah, it's not too sweet. It's not too spicy. It's like the perfect amount of both. And once you get it on a bun, or I feel like you could even eat this just in a bowl with the coleslaw or without the coleslaw, maybe on some rice or a tortilla, literally. The world is your oyster. This beef is your oyster. It tastes incredible and it, there's like no skill involved at all. And that is my style. <laughs> That's my style of cooking. As far as the coleslaw goes, you guys know I already took a nibble of this. So you guys know I'm not a fan of apple cider vinegar, like not in the slightest. I know it is a cure-all. I have no desire to cure anything with apple cider vinegar, although it's very tempting. I mean, it's not overpowering at all. This is delicious and it's simple and you know the ingredients that you're putting into it, which is important. I'm going to assemble it. I threw the rolls into the oven just to give them a nice toast. A step one, a step two, I'm still waiting for the cavalry to come in. I'm just assembling one for the thumbnail, <laughs> but man, oh man, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to wait to guzzle this down. This is absolute perfection. And then grab a nice healthy topping of coleslaw. You can add pickles to this, whatever other toppings that you enjoy. Yeah, that is looking good. I'm looking good, looking good. Why did I grab the smallest plate we own? <laughs> and then a little topping on top. Bop, 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 bop. And did you know we eat with our eyeballs first? Because that is the truth. Okay, I'm gonna transfer. Mm, oh, wow, oh, wow. Listen, I'm no food blogger. I don't know how to make this look good, but like, that looks good. <laughs> Doesn't take much to make good food look good, you know? And there it is with a side of sweet potato fries, if we can even call them that. Just sweet potatoes, man. Any vegetable you want. That's just, oh, divine. Simply the best. I still in my soul. Love classic country. I'm gonna put these straight into the oven. I have gluten-free bread for Eleanor, no worries. Another day, another dinner. Tonight's dinner was inspired because there's a taco bus that Alex and I have eaten at a couple of times. A few times, I think it's been, I've eaten there three times. It is delicious. I don't know what kind of tacos they make. They are so good, so I thought I'd try to find a recipe to recreate them. I found something called, I actually don't even know it, Berea Tacos, is that close? I don't, it's a crock pot meal, which is great because obviously you guys know how it goes. So I'm gonna throw everything into a crock pot and then I have an array of spices here which is really going to obviously bring a lot of flavor to the dish. And then I'm gonna make tacos. So it's like slow cooker Berea tacos. Um, obviously you don't have to make tacos. I'm using corn tortillas. You can put it over rice. You could eat it on its own. I don't care what you do with it. I'm sure it's gonna be fantastic. And then as a side dish, I'll throw it together later today when I get home. It'll be like uh, some kind of Mexican black beans. I feel like I love black beans. My kids love black beans. I'm always trying to get a good black bean recipe. So you guys know, first thing we're gonna do, no surprise to lock in the juices, I'm going to sear the meat on both sides. I have, oh gosh, what kind of meat is this? Flank steak. Ooh, we're getting fancy up in here with the flank steak. So just a little bit of oil in the frying pan and then sear both sides just to lock in the juices. And then once that's finished, I'm going to throw it straight into the crock pot. Oh, I see. Mine was like folded over. Oh, so all of this didn't get, see, whatever, it's fine. I'm washing my hands, calm down. Okay, so to the crock pot, I'm adding chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. Never used this before. It took me a while to find it in the grocery store. And you know what this reminds me of? An internet game that I used to play I don't know, forever ago, literally a different lifetime. And um, it was like a, a cooking game, no surprise there. The most popular meal I served was like whatever in adobo sauce, and I've never made anything in real life with adobo sauce. It just smells like barbecue. It smells like a really good barbecue place. Okay, so all of the peppers go in. 
I assume all, I don't know. What am I gonna do with the rest of the can? Man, I just got crap all over my printout. Try as I may to have my life together, it never works out. Calls for some minced garlic. You guys know I'm just gonna use powdered garlic. That's the train I'm on these days. I have yet to go to Costco to grab normal garlic. Three bay leaves. Oh man, one tablespoon of cumin. I'm fresh out of cumin and I keep forgetting to buy it. Although I feel like I bought some yesterday. No, I didn't. I only bought bay leaves and turns out I actually already had bay leaves, so I don't know what I was thinking. It also calls for some kind of chilies. I don't know, spicy chilies. I just have this ancho, ancho chili powder. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that to compensate. My kids don't like a ton of spice, so I feel like we'll live without it. Ooh, some coriander. That is different. See, I thought I had everything out. Um, I didn't. I need cinnamon. Did I take the cinnamon out? Half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I don't, I don't make the rules. I just follow them and then a little bit of ginger. I have the ginger paste. Use what you have. If you don't like ginger at all, I don't care. Leave it out. It also calls for some oregano. You guys know I don't keep that crap around. I feel like you get more flavor. Oh my gosh. The cinnamon really brings out the scents of the other spices. That's crazy how that happens. Um, Italian seasoning. More bang for your buck. Just a little bit in there. Oh, some paprika. I Oh, I thought I had a little musclos, is loud. Oh, that's cayenne pepper. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is cayenne pepper. I use this in um, my slow cooker barbecue beef meal, <laughs> and everyone was like, this is more spicy than I was thinking. It's because I meant to use paprika, but I use this instead. Whoops. I thought that was a paprika. Oh my gosh, whatever, I can't find it. <laughs> I have been thinking that was paprika since I've had it. So that's a problem, but not really. Life goes on. A quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. Just gonna splash a little bit in there. And you know, I joke about not having my life together because I don't, but I feel like I have part of my life together whenever I have a meal plan and I know what's for dinner. You know what I mean? Just one part of the puzzle. I'm putting in, against my better judgment, I don't like tomatoes, but here we go, 14 and a half ounces of fire roasted tomatoes. And then four cups or 32 ounces of beef stock. I'm just gonna dump all of that into, or broth. I actually have broth. Pop a top on that. That looks fantastic as it is. I'm gonna put it on slow for all day, okay? Did I say slow? I meant low. <laughs> Well, it's been quite a while, and I think the meat is done. Who the heck knows? It smells really great. Yeah, man, that smells good. I'm just gonna take the meat out. I'm, try I'm gonna try to get it all in one piece. Yeah, that wasn't hard at all. I'm gonna put it in a bowl, and um, was that all of it? <laughs> it shrunk up a little bit. And then I'm going to take two forks and shred it. Like, look how easily this shredded. I don't even need a second fork. But what I'm gonna do with this sauce, I'm gonna take an immersion blender and blend it all up, or you can dump it into an actual blender. Oh wait, take the bay leaves out. It's probably too hot for me to do that with my fingers. The bay leaves would be a little crusty. Well, wish me luck, cause I have to find the bay leaves. I mean, I'm about to have little crunchies in my sauce because I'm sick of looking for the bay leaves. Yeah, and I'm done. Two is better than none. Take your immersion blender and tap away. Hey, I found the third bay leaf. Yeah, 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 found it. Okay, things are getting a little wild and crazy over here. I'm getting injured, the sauce is so dang hot, the spices, um, they're literally making me cough. That, oh, it's still real chunky. All right, I'll take another go at that. But for now, I'm gonna make the side dish. Oh, hold on, just wait, one thing at a time. The pieces are a little long for me, so I just got scissors in here and gave it the old one, two, chippity chop. Some of the sauce and pour it in here so the meat doesn't dry out. And then I'm gonna move on to my side dish. The okay, just kidding with the beans. Um, I'll assemble the tacos instead. We're out of beans, black beans. I thought I had a whole case, but I have a bean thief over here, so that's okay. So to assemble the 
tacos, whatever this is, of course you can just eat them as is, like put the meat inside and then some onion and cilantro, which is what, how I plan on eating them. But just for funsies, we'll do a couple this way. I like mine without cheese, but here we go. To help it stick, because we're going to fold this over, um, a little bit of meat, a little bit of cheese, and then into a hot pan. And then for flavor, you can just over top. It doesn't take long to cook it. So about, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute. Okay, that was fun, but let's not do that again with the sauce. I feel like maybe once after we cook them, then we can throw some sauce on there. But that just made it soggy and woggy. Two things I definitely don't want describing my dinner. Okay, take two with just the oil. Do I have enough oil? Man, things were sticking, things were getting crazy up in here. Here's how it turned out, by the way, which I would still be eat, be eat happily. Oh my God, I just took a bite. It was incredible. Okay, flip it before it burns. So I'm gonna make mine open face, but I just wanted to have a few out there. I like it with onion, cilantro, and lemon, or lime juice. Um, what I did was I fried it, and then I put the sauce on top of it, and that just looks gourmet to me. Bon appetit! I think Alex is really gonna like this one. I mean, I really like it too. This sauce does soften it up after frying it, so if that's not your thing, uh, don't do that. <laughs> but it does add a lot of flavor, the sauce does. Uh, this is how I like to eat them. Our dishwasher is still not in. It's been weeks and I'm at the point where we have resorted to paper plates some nights, so leave me alone, okay? We're doing our best over here. What makes this delicious is the lime juice. That's no joke, okay? Don't skimp on the lime juice. Also, double tortilla. You gotta do it. It is time for dessert. You guys know I always include a delicious dessert. Sometimes it's brownies. Today it is blondies. I thought we would continue on the barbecue theme, summer theme, even though it didn't start out that way. It's whatever, it's almost summer. Uh, strawberry lemon blondies. I Hold on, I need a lemon or two. Go big or go home. I almost didn't make this because I wrote down the recipe and I wrote down diced strawberries, but in my head, I thought it said dried strawberries, and I was like, game over, let's find a different recipe. Uh, thankfully, you don't need that. I'm gonna set my temperature oven, yep, said that, to 350 degrees. You know, I never really write down directions, but I am going to use my KitchenAid to mix the batter together because one of the comments to the recipe was that the dough was very hard to mix and it was dry, so I don't know. To me, when I look at the recipe, it kind of looks like a shortbread dough. It's really just butter, sugar, flour. Like there's no liquid in it. So I'm kind of anticipating something delicious with a twist of lemon and the sweetness of str Okay, what are done. Honestly, I was lucky to find an egg in my fridge, you guys. You guys know my dilemma. I I need to just buy some eggs, but I every time I go to the grocery store, I forget. I don't know why. I'm just gonna throw these sticks of butter into the microwave to soften them because that's my life, man. I'm not prepared for anything. It's the best part of the week for me. Man, I love dessert. I'm excited already. One cup of butter. Okay, I had to double check that. I was like, is it one cup or am I just a butter fiend? And three quarters of a cup of sugar. And then whip that up till it's nice and creamy, but you have to plug it in first. There we go. Oh my word, this is nice and light and airy and fluffy and creamy and dreamy. What are some other adjectives? That looks good to me. Now we're going to add a quarter cup of lime juice. So I'm just gonna juice, well, I don't know if I'll juice one or two, let's see. Yeah, that was pretty juicy. I might just do one lime. I mean, this is lemon. Did I, do I keep saying lime? Ugh, don't listen to me. A quarter cup. Is that a quarter cup? Let's do one and a half. Honestly, should we add some zest? I'm gonna do it. It is Golden Girl summer after all. 
Can't be a golden girl without adding zest to your strawberry lemon blondies. Plus this lemon, I mean, it was good last week. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I gotta get rid of it. I won't add too much. I feel like it, it can get a little overpowered. I love lemon though. Gosh, it adds so much flavor. And you know, sometimes you just gotta do stuff for yourself. I'm gonna add all the zest. <laughs> and then because I think that was a shy quarter cup, I'm just gonna add more. Also, I don't want it to be dry like that one person said, even though I'm, I'm pretty convinced they screwed it up on their own. Wait, where's my egg? Oh, there, it's hiding. Add one egg to this as well, and then mix it on up. All right, once that's looking all fluffy and duffy, add two and a quarter cup of flour. That's perfect. You're obviously supposed to sift this, but I never do that. I don't care. And then half a teaspoon of baking powder, and then mix that all together. Yeah, this is pretty dry. Um, well, it, they said it was very hard to mix by hand, which I feel like, I mean, come on. Do you have muscles, you know? I just tasted the batter, salmonella, I dare you. Holy crap, I could just eat the batter. That, that is it. But alas, I will continue. I have some strawberries here. We need one cup of diced strawberries. I'm gonna get pretty, I think pretty small pieces because you know, that's what diced means. These are really honkin' chonkin' strawberries. So I'm pretty sure four is gonna get me to a cup. I'm gonna say that's a heaping cup and I'm gonna measure it right here. This is a heaping cup of the diced strawberries. Is there something that screams summertime more than strawberries? You know what, I keep looking this batter, it's like salmonella dairy. And I have to tell you, if you just want a lemon bar or whatever it is, blondie, I don't think this is a blondie, this is it. Okay, I see what they mean. This is a very thick dough, but that's what it's supposed to be. I'm going to take the one cup and fold them in. Oh, I love strawberries. And if you don't like lemon, leave it out. Then this will be like a strawberry shortcake kind of thing. Maybe get some strawberry extract if you wanna go the extra mile. Do they sell strawberry extract? I feel like they should or do. I'm done. I should just make a what's for dessert week of videos. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I love dessert. Okay, if you were here for my last week of dinners, you know the dilemma with the uh, some more brownies. I never use parchment paper, but I feel like I need to. I have to grease that. There's a cup of butter in here, you know? It says to use a nine inch dish. This is gonna be real thick. Like I'm questioning if I should get a nine by, oh, did it say nine by 13? Oh my gosh, am I an idiot? Don't answer that. No, it says nine inch square baking pan, which seems crazy. First of all, I don't have a nine inch. I don't even have an eight by eight. This is not on either one of those, but this is a lot of dough. You know what? I'm gonna do whatever the heck I want. Well, I was gonna get the bigger dish and then I just, I'm still debating if I'm being honest. I wanna save this for myself, leave me alone. 30 to 35 minutes. That's how long you put it in the oven for, okay? So since mine is a little on the thick side, I did end up cooking it for about 40 to 45 minutes. Actually it was 43 and a half minutes. It smells really good. And there is a glaze that we put on top. You need strawberry puree. I feel like you can use strawberry jam if you don't wanna do this or get a blender dirty. Um, but you need about two strawberries and about one teaspoon of lemon juice. I'm just gonna do half a lemon and then blend this up or try to see if it works out for me. So then to make the glaze, you take that and add it to one cup of powdered sugar. Here's what the final reveal is. You're actually supposed to put this through a sifter. You guys know I'm not gonna do that. Oh, a big chunk, that's awesome. Yeah, that piece doesn't wanna go. I feel like we have enough liquid in here to make the glaze, so we're totally fine. We might even need more powdered sugar. It doesn't take a lot of liquid to make a glaze. Plus, no one ever said, mm, this pastry has too much glaze on it. What a beautiful color this is. I'm just going, oh gosh, this is pretty soft. I'm just gonna take it and dump it over top and spread it around and let that sit. 
Oh, see, more glaze, hmm? I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. This smells out of this world. I took a chunk off for a taste test, cause you know, that's how the chefs do it. And the parchment paper was amazing. And I feel like I did overcook it a little bit. I don't know, no, that looks fantastic. Man, it is so good. I'm gonna cut it into squares and then plate it like they do on Pinterest and then eat the entire confection. I mean, leaning tower of strawberry lemon shortcake. I wonder if I should just make it too tall. Does that look better? <laughs> Less absurd. So that's going to be my dessert, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I, I, it, it's spectacular. It's amazing. Whoever said it was dry, they don't know what they're talking about. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out. I hope you enjoyed the recipes that I shared. If you want to, Hang around, subscribe, put a little happy in your day. I'll see you next time. Bye.